A.B. Martin. It's my first shoot back in the field, and in true, well, this year has been horrible fashion, the weather did not cooperate. Oh my god, it's so cold! And what better subject to crawl out of my incredibly warm home for than the first insurrection on the Capitol since Mitch McConnell's birth year of 1814. Time to do a COVID safe sit down with some lawbreakers. Am I talking about Antifa? No. Rioters? No. Nuns? Absolutely. It's good to be here. But they're both around 90, so of course they're not here here, because Ed is cold. Frigid. Anyway, unlike these people who enjoyed their day of mayhem with few consequences, these troublemakers were arrested on site for protesting inhumane immigration policies, while Stephanie Woodward was kicked to the curb for protesting the gutting of Medicaid and the ACA. And New York public advocate Jumani Williams was arrested for protesting an unjust deportation while black. Their arrests were a little different than what we saw on January 6th. So I've been arrested a few times. I'm black. I also have Tourette's syndrome, so I, I may uh, movements, which makes it interesting sometimes when you're dealing with law enforcement. The scariest arrest I've ever participated was protecting someone from being deported. We were flung around like rag dolls. Just out of curiosity, because, um, just check my notes. Did you take any selfies with Capitol Police? Ah! I'll take that as a no, but you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, or something like that. Maybe Stephanie had better luck than Jumani when she protested at the Capitol with ADAPT. No no, I guess not. They just didn't seem to welcome us. No. So five guys carried me out of the building and they plopped me on the sidewalk where they knew I wouldn't be able to move and used my wheelchair to continue taking other people out like a dolly. They used your wheelchair as a dolly. Yes. I find that infuriating because they 100% gave the horns back to that guy who was wearing horns. Yeah! This is and get this, the guy who had zip tie handcuffs at the Capitol was never cuffed. Mr. Police, he gave you all the clues. If you do not cease and desist, you will be placed under arrest. That was not the case with my two favorite nuns. We were handcuffed behind our back. I asked if I could be um, cuffed with my hands in front of me, and the woman said no, and then cuffed me in the back. That was our first arrest, to stand with the dreamers. I don't mean to take the Lord's name in vain, but I like you guys. <laughs> These three stories are not like anything we saw on the sex. You good, sir? Do you need medical attention? I'm good, thank you. Any chance I could get you guys yeah. to leave the Senate wing? We love you guys, take it easy. At what point did you realize, oh, wait a minute, this looks very different from protests that I've been involved in? Well, it just took over the Capitol building. <laughs> that just doesn't happen. Right. I was wondering why they were getting a VIP pass. Did someone forget to plan here? Because when a group of 200 wheelchair users comes to protest, they have buildings blocked off. So clearly something went wrong or honestly, was intentionally not there. Right. Capitol Police have taken canes away from the blind people, indicating that they could be used as a weapon. Maybe they should have used a, a Kalashnikov instead. I'll give them that advice for the future. Thank you. The insurrectionists walked in as easily as the guy delivering fast food to Mar-a-Lago. And once inside, they broke things, stole stuff. People even died. These guys aren't protesters. Comparing them to protesters is a real problem. Hang on. What is the difference between civil disobedience and crime? Well, you know, what happened on January 6th was a mob, not civil disobedience. Civil disobedience is civilians who are protesting something that is very wrong. Yeah. And if you're pushing to uphold the systems of supremacy and privilege, you'll be given the guided tour. Right. You know, people keep saying what we saw on the Capitol is un-American, but the most American thing you can do is trying to uphold white supremacy. It's actually just as American as apple pie. I feel like that apple pie has been cooling on the windowsill for 300 years and it's still too hot to eat. <laughs> a lot of people in this country want to make this pie conversation about class, misinformation, and cops, but that's not the main flavor. It's a white supremacy pie. So how do we get a new pie? Now that Joe Biden is president, do you think that America will walk peacefully into the warm, loving arms of progress? and equality and social equanimity? Well, I know I won't be walking, so. <laughs> we have a history of marginalizing people who are not white men, and we need to accept that 
and confront that before we can move anywhere. It's true. And Dr. King said, peace is not the absence of tension, it's the presence of justice. You have to disturb the peace to get the equity that you need right. and deserve. My thing is, if you're still comfortable now, you're not doing enough. Is this uncomfortable enough? How physically cold we all are right now? We feel guilty being in this nice warm house. Uh-oh, oh no, they're going out of focus. Can you guys just knock it a bit? There we go. Oh, here we go. Okay. You're back. How do we move forward? Thoughts and prayers? Well, prayer is powerful, but you also have to put your body on the line. And we've got to listen right. and talk to each other. But we don't have to still listen to Ted Cruz, though, do we? No. No. <laughs> no. Okay, thank you. Amen. Aw, thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, hit subscribe and visit our page for more videos. Or if you'd like to be radicalized, leave YouTube on autoplay.